Welcome to another Movie Crumbs. Um, this is the third fucking time I've had to record not only the intro, but the whole goddamn thing. Because the past two times I've tried using Audacity, and it sucked ass. The audio sounded like it was coming through a Discord call, and I still don't completely understand why it sounded like that. Which is really fucking annoying. So, yeah, this is the third time I've had to record it. Outside of that, um, it's been fucking hot because, you know, Australia, mate. And also, um, 2024 has been pretty alright. I mean, not really much has happened so far, but I'm having a fun time. And I hope you're all enjoying your year too. Anyways, let's get right into the uh, movie comes. Alright, quick story time. This is Chopper Reed. He's a criminal in Australia. He had his ears chopped off, he claims to have killed at least 19 people, and he is a best-selling author and criminal celebrity. He's also what I would describe as MENTAL! Well this fucking nut was so popular that I got a full Hollywood feature made after him. And it's great. The film is a look through Chopper's life between when he was first in prison, to when he got out, to when he went back in. Basically covering the events of the book. The first thing that instantly jumps out at me in this film is Eric Banner's performance as Chopper. You may know Eric Banner from the really bad Hulk film, but his performance as Chopper is amazing. He nails Chopper to a T, his accent, his mannerisms, his general way of talking, the way he's able to quickly switch between emotions on a dime. It's great to watch in both entertainment and suspense. Something I really like about this film is that it's very gritty. This film has some great moments that just make you go, holy fuck. I found the prison stuff the most effective, but the stuff outside the prison is also pretty great. There's a very clear style throughout the film with the way it's edited, directed and shot, and how it sounds. It kind of puts you in the same headspace as Chopper. One minute it's quite playful and fast, and the next it's dark and tension fills the room, all while being coloured through a grungy and gross Australian lens. The overall result is a crazy film that really makes you feel like Chopper. The overall result is a film that feels crazy, violent, stylized, and weirdly believable if that makes sense. If you like a good Aussie crime flick, or just crime flicks in general, I honestly couldn't recommend Chopper enough. It's great. 8 out of 10. Hey, did you ever want to watch a crappy version of Die Hard except on a submarine? No? Well fuck you, here's Crash Dive. There's not really much to say about this film to be honest. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not good either. This film is about a terrorist group who steals a submarine with a nuke on it, so Mr. Who Gives a Shit has to go on the submarine and stop the terrorists. So basically Die Hard on a submarine, except with the tenth of the budget of Die Hard. This film is passable I guess. The action is passable, the acting is passable, the plot is passable. It's passable, but it's also incredibly forgettable. There are some entertaining moments, like the drill kill is pretty funny. Oh, there's no, there's a pipe, no drill, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and this bit is kind of cool. The main villain's death is memorable. But most of the time, it's just a standard, forgettable action movie package. And that's all this film really is, it's just... forgettable. 4 out of 10. Wow. Just wow. You are fucking shameless, countermeasures. Okay, so imagine Crash Dive, but worse. This film is literally a rip-off of a rip-off. And I mean, like, not even hiding the fact that it's a rip-off. Same plot, same main actor, same setting, same everything. But yet, even with everything being the same, it's somehow a hundred times lamer than Crash Dive. Oh, and speaking of Crash Dive, the film is called Crash Dive 2 over here, but this film and this film have no relation. It was just called that to, I guess, cash in on the popularity of Crash Dive. Yeah, because the film was so popular with the masses. The film just reeks of laziness, and it's just so fucking boring. 
Anything cool that you think is gonna happen just doesn't and is replaced by something instantly lamer. The acting has gone worse, especially by this actor, Jesus Christ she's bad. The plot is the exact same down to the conflict, same with the characters, same with the setting, same with most of this film. Do I really have to keep talking about this? Fuck this film, F for no effort, 1 out of 10. Meeting People is Easy is quite a unique film when it comes to band documentaries. Mainly in the way that it portrays its subjects and how it goes about accomplishing that. Ooh, I had to yawn, sorry. Meeting People is Easy is about Radiohead, aka. <laughs> and their world tour after releasing the critically acclaimed OK Computer, after originally being pegged as one hit wonders from the release of Creep. What's interesting about this film is how it acts almost as a companion piece to OK Computer. OK Computer is an album mainly dealing with paranoia and isolation, and a world that is becoming more reliant on technology and its rapid advancement. In a way, Meaning People's Easy captures a lot of those ideas of paranoia and isolation, but rather through the lens of the pressures of fame and the exhaustion of constantly being in the spotlight, rather than the pressures of often mundane lives in the face of a growing technological society. Yes, fuck you, I use the word society to describe a piece of art. Meeting People is Easy, as a result, is less of a band doc in the traditional sense, and more an exploration of a band spiralling under the weight of their own opus, and the exhaustion of being in a band of such high fame. Meeting People is Easy explores those ideas through the use of its aesthetic camera work and editing, rather than the actual events of the film. As a result, it creatively captures that sense of exhaustion and paranoia that the band was going through at that time. Especially with the context of OK Computer, Meeting People is Easy comes off more as a horror film than anything else. A bleak look into artist expectations destroying the artist in question, and the frustration of constantly being put under a public lens. This film is also a gem if you are into Radiohead. Tons of cool insights into many of the band's songs, some of which are unreleased at that point, as well as having some pretty good live performances. I don't think this film is perfect though. It does get pretty repetitive, and while its aesthetic is interesting, it can also get on my nerves a bit. It's a little headache inducing at points. While it does capture that out of control feeling the band was going through, it makes for a difficult watch at points, and not in a way that feels intentional or fun to revisit. Overall, Meeting People is Easy is an interesting band documentary that I'll probably only recommend if you are a fan of Radiohead, especially in this era of the band. I enjoy it, but it does have its flaws. Still, if it sounds interesting to you, check it out. 7 out of 10. Wem Lenders' Paris, Texas is one of the most tender, mournful, and beautiful films ever made. I rarely get to talk about why I consider a masterpiece on this channel, but Paris, Texas is one of those special films that I would say is a 10 out of 10. A film that does everything it sets out to do perfectly in my opinion. Paris, Texas' premise is that a man named Travis, who disappeared from his family four years ago, is found and taken back to civilization by his brother, where the pieces of what happened to him are slowly reassembled. Paris, Texas is a film soaked in the feelings of melancholy, isolation, and regret. Presented as a family drama on the forefront, Paris, Texas is a film that takes its time to get everything done. But unlike other films where I would find this to be a negative, Paris, Texas uses this emptiness as a way to communicate the themes of the story and Travis's own processing. Paris, Texas cares about soaking you into the atmosphere of its setting and its characters. Its long shots of deserts and the slide guitar soundtrack etching themselves into you before the story does. And when the story gets moving, it really gets moving. At once being a poetic family tragedy and a look into the failings of the American dream, Paris, Texas portrays its subjects with a sympathy many other films just don't afford, and it leads to some of the most potent and emotional moments ever shown on film. Paris, Texas isn't a dramatic film in the traditional sense, but the weight of its drama and the way it conveys it leads to some amazingly heartrending and cinematic moments. When Wenders knows how to pull the most out of a story through his use of setting and pacing equally with its characters and plot, there's a meditative quality to this film, but it's not emotionless, rather it's reflective and powerful. Paris, Texas is a film that covers so much or so little. It's subtle, but that gives room for the elements and themes of the story to really bubble up and stay with you. It's a perfect example of less is more, and its mix of idealization and failure make for an emotionally potent film for the ages. 
Paris, Texas is a masterful film, and I would highly recommend it. 10 out of 10. And that's the movie crumbs done. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I won't hold you up for much longer. Um, thank you for watching, and goodbye.